All right, 73.2. Um, I couldn't find any statistics about the number of ISIS fighters killed by Obama versus the number killed by Trump. I guess that's understandably, you know, hard. I don't know, maybe if I, we had more time. Um, I did, I already knew this, but the number of civilians killed um, under Trump versus under Obama is, is much, uh, 200 civilians have, were known to have been killed by Obama's bombing runs, but um, Trump's, Trump loosened up the rules of engagement and at least 800 died under Trump because he just blew up more people. Um, but I couldn't find out how many ISIS fighters were blown up. Before you change the subject, okay. just like to respond, for those of you that don't remember this, and I include all Democrats, in 2011, Obama pulled the troops out saying that Iraq had been stabilized against the advice of all the Republicans and one artist working in Torrance. When he did that, 200,000 people were murdered by ISIS. Okay, let that sink in. And they weren't just murdered, they were tortured to death. Children's heads were put on spikes. Women were sold into slavery. But Obama wasn't done with his reign of All right, blood. all right, all right. No, Obama wasn't done. I'd like to speak up for the man, the president that brought slavery back to Africa. For the first time in centuries, black people are being sold by the thousands in Libya because Obama attacked the Libyan government and, and destabilized it, killed their leader, left Libya in chaos. And now Libya is a failed state run by terrorist groups that are selling black people into slavery by the thousand. Another of the great achievements of Obama, the man that Rick voted for and admired. Twice. All right, and I'd like to remind everybody that in 2003, Bush and Cheney lied us into a, a fairly disastrous invasion of Iraq that led to the deaths of between 100,000 and 500,000 and possibly more civilians in their civil war that we caused by destabilizing that country. Thank God Bush and Cheney overpowered Saddam Hussein, who had attacked Iran, the Kurds, Kuwait, and the United States. Thank God that they did that. And if Obama hadn't been dead set on losing the war, it would have been a great victory and 200,000 people would be alive today. Bullshit. Bush and Cheney had, and Rumsfeld had no plan for post, <clears throat> for the, after the initial invasion. And thank God for Bush's dad, who, took, who in, in the first Gulf War, quickly, and effectively got Hussein out of Kuwait and pretty much pacified the region. You were against that, weren't you, Rick? No, I was against it because the day that the shock and awe campaign, wait, was shock and awe was Bush too? Uh, Whatever. So you were against... No, what, wait, let me tell you why I was against, against it. You were against the Gulf War, right, Rick? I was... I, Turned out to be, a, actually, no, was I against? Yeah, what, you were what, against the it, day, right? No, wait, shut up for a second. The, the day that the ground war started in 1991 was the day that I was on, supposed to be on Jeopardy on TV, and I was preempted by the ground war in, Gulf, in Iraq War I. And then the only time that they showed it was on one of those Saturday you know, afternoon things when a football game didn't run long enough and they needed to f fill time. So my big shot at, at showing the world on Jeopardy was scuttled by that war. But on the other hand, I lost on Jeopardy, so maybe I, it's better that people didn't see it. No rest for the wicked, Rick. I would just like to say for the 1,000th time, <clears throat> there's a huge difference in fighting the war against Saddam Hussein and winning it, and deliberately losing the war, which is what Obama did by not leaving a force of 2,500 men 
in Iraq by pulling up all Bush had to do was defeat the largest army in the Middle East. All Obama had to do was leave a policing force in the country so that it didn't collapse into chaos, but he didn't do that. He did that on purpose so that Bullshit. we would lose the war. He did it again. He did it because he was stupid? Which is it, Rick? Did he do it because he was stupid or because like, he was a traitor? Maybe stupid, maybe because... Thank you. You maybe voted because, for a stupid Shut up for a bastard. second. Maybe because you the government... For, you voted for a stupid bastard. Maybe because the bastard. government of Iraq didn't want America in there anymore. Now, Obama could have overruled him probably. Yes, I guess he could have, couldn't he? But it wouldn't have been necessary... So he was weak, wasn't he? He was Bush weak and stupid. Shut up. God damn it, Lance. Um, if Bush and Cheney hadn't started this unnecessary war in the first place, that had already That's no killed, excuse. That's no excuse. Rick, Rick, it's no excuse. All he had to do, all he had to do, a civil war all he had to do, 2003 and 2009, hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians had already been killed because of this war and no, then no plan for after the war and when Bush decided to, and Cheney decided to fire the entire Iraqi military, which f then, with no job, went on to form the nucleus of all these terrible terrorist organizations, including ISIS eventually. Filibuster. All right. That's the other thing. It was very. It would have been very easy. All Obama right. had to do was just leave a force there. There were no, there were more, there were more military casualties from accidents in the United States than there were people being killed in Iraq. He had nothing to lose. All he had to do was say, "We're not leaving our base. Our base is going to stay here for another few years. No problem." But no, he had to make sure we lost, and because of him, two hundred thousand dead in Iraq, and then. Untold thousands are dead in Libya. We don't even know how many thousands are dead. So the first black president brought slavery back to Libya. Thousands and thousands. If you're, if you're interested, if you really love Obama, go to the internet and type in pictures of slave auctions in Libya. What they do is they hang black people by their feet and they put them all on a, on a, on a rope that has three to a rope. They put it up against a pole and they hang them by their feet so that their faces are in the dirt. Okay? And this is, was never done before. It was all brought back because Obama destroyed the Libyan government and put that country what into exactly anarchy. What exactly did he do? He, he had... What exactly did he do? Now he, Rick's going to argue with me. Yeah, he assassinated... He, he assassinated over, he Ka over, Gaddafi. He overthrew Gaddafi and left the country in chaos. You're for that, though, right, Rick? Because no, Obama did it. But you're, and you, you love Obama. You give frickin' G.W. Bush a pass, but you, it, it, but it's all on Obama, the traitor. Well, well, let me ask you a question, Rick. If Obama hadn't overthrown the Iraqi, the Libyan government, would there be slave auctions in Libya right now? No. Thank you. Can we have Volver? No, we're not done yet. Oh, you've got a, an explanation. Guilty with an excuse. Sorry. No, we, Explain we look, to me. It was a good thing. Shut up for a second. We have another topic. I think you're losing your temper, Rick. I What's am, fucker, because you fucking filibuster about everything, and you bring up the same points again and again, and you excuse G.W. Bush, but everything Obama did that was a mistake is, is being a traitor. A mistake. He fucked up. He fucked up. He, he, and he, he got 200,000 people killed. And oh, G.W. Bush fucked up. That was a justified war. No, it wasn't. No. Yeah, but you know what? You're, you're the only one that thinks that. There are I'm not. Millions Most of America no, 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 agrees no, with no, me. No, no, All right, no. so let's go on to the next topic, which is stop and frisk, whether it helps stuff. So I saw two things. Uh, there are some things... Some people think stop and frisk actually reduces crime. The other thing I saw was that it's police presence in high crime areas that reduces crime. Send more police in, neighborhood policing, and that stop and frisk actually doesn't help. It just kind of pisses people off. And what really helps is just having police there. 
Um, which, but the police don't have to be a hostile presence, which there's a certain amount of hostility in, in stop and frisk. So Lance. Okay. Um, according to the statistics that Rick showed me, uh, as stop and frisk increased, crime went down. Now, uh, and Having crime continued to go down after stop and frisk. But that, was, that was, was probably stopped. because they were putting people in jail. The, the reason it continued to go down was because it was effective. After well, the they report stopped that has those yeah, st I statistics. It, yeah, I saw it. And, and what it does is this. As the stop and frisk went up, the crime went down. Then when the stop and frisk was stopped, the crime continued to go down a little bit because of the effect of the stop and frisk. That's the part Rick doesn't comprehend. Well, let's just show the graphs. Let's well, that's throw fine. the graph. Let's show the there. graph, but you have to explain why that what's happening is happening. All right. You just missed, you just wanted to believe what the graph was showing you supported your argument. Well, you just Lance, you're spilling shit. All right, it's gonna... And, and by the, the way, by the way, I'm in well. favor of... Wait, you can leave it on. Sure. I'm in favor of increased police presence. It's the Democrats that tried to pull back the police. Bullshit. It's the Democrats. The Democrat-run cities are the ones that are crime-ridden. Clinton, Clinton was the one who tried to increase police. No, Chicago is a war zone now, and it's been run by Democrats. The only time that crime went down in New York was when a Republican became the mayor. Mayor Giuliani. Bullshit. Bullshit. Mayor Giuliani is the one that brought crime down in New York. The Democrats... Let, left New York a war zone, like Chicago. Yeah, well, crime continued to go down under not just Giuliani, but... Uh, there it is. All right. All right, so... Okay, now look. As stop and frisk goes up, crime goes down. Uh, now... Okay. Bring the screen down just a little bit. I mean, not the, 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 the flap. It's tilted this way. Which, this one? That, like that, a little bit more. Okay. That's perfect. All right, that's graph. That's one graph. Let's show another. As stop and frisk. Oh, great. He tries to hide what well, I'm going to No, show. it's a fucking pop up ad. <laughs> that's bring your fault. Bring this down. It, as stop and frisk goes up, crime goes down. Show it again. Now, one more time. Stop and frisk goes up, crime goes down. Now, when they stop stop and frisk, the crime levels off and goes down a little bit, but the point is, is that the effect of the stop and frisk is probably what made the crime continue to yeah, go down a little bit. that's not the conclusion bit. drawn in the paper. Well, they can conclude whatever they want, but there's no proof for your conclusion either. And I do believe in a police presence. That's why I vote Republican. It, it, is, it is the Democrat administrations of the major cities in the United States that have led them to become war zones. It is the, it, it, when Giuliani was the mayor of New York, a Republican, he was the one that brought down crime. So how many, so what do you think of Bloomberg? I think crime's going to go up under Bloomberg, it, but we just, it remains what do you mean? to be seen. What do you mean? Bloomberg's been mayor of of New York for three terms. I would be willing to bet New that, York is that, one of the most went, that crime went down more under Giuliani, and we'd have to look that up. Bullshit. That, that Giuliani was better for crime than Bloomberg. Bloomberg. And, and if anything, Bloomberg is simply uh, benefiting from what Giuliani did. He was the one that cleaned up New York, a Republican. So, so you're basically arguing for Republican policies. No, well, Bloomberg was mayor of New York for three terms. Yeah, after Giuliani cleaned it up. All right, we'll break. How many more minutes we have? 11 minutes. All no, right. that's, that's it. That's no, it. That's no, no, it. No, no, I'm we'll done. Just... I'm done. We can well, then you're not, argument I've... in two parts. No, fucking let's look it up. Let's see what crime did under Giuliani. We don't have time. We don't have yeah, time. Do have I have a life. life. All right, give me Unless two minutes. Unless you people want to pay me to do this. Let me give, give me two minutes. Lance. You can't look this up in two minutes, Rick. Yeah, you can. Lance, while, while he's doing that, what did you think of the 60 Minutes interview? You think Trump was, do you think Trump was, how did you feel about his performance? I, I thought he was a, he was a very successful president 
trying to defend himself against a very hostile and biased reporter. And I just think it's sad. You Wait. can bring, please let me answer the question. You can bring peace and prosperity to a country. You can uh, defeat the enemy. You can fight for fair trade with China, with, with NAFTA. Uh, you, can, you can bring unemployment down to unprecedented levels. But what are you going to get? You're going to get a hostile reporter that's looking for trouble. And I, I, think it's, I think it's really sad that people don't just admit, look, he's doing a good job. Leave him alone. If you've got a question, answer it, but don't attack the guy. And also, you know what? The, she wanted to make him apologize for the way he treated Ford. You know what? She deserved to be made fun of. She was, a, she was obviously a liar. Uh, well, that's coming, bullshit, coming bullshit, out, bullshit, 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 bullshit. Great argument, Rick. Thank I commend you, you on thank your you. genius. Fucking thank you. Uh, she she came out of the woodwork with with a cockamamie story. He pointed out that she had no evidence whatsoever, uh, no witnesses, which was fair. I, I'm glad he pointed that out. She deserved to be made fun of. Listen, if my mother came out of the woodwork 35 years later with no evidence and no witnesses, sorry, mom, that argument's not going to work out. You can't make a claim like that. You have to have some kind of proof. And all Trump did was point that out. He has no reason to apologize to Leslie Stahl about that or anything else. How about the, the part of the thing where he, he, he made him, he, he, she was asking him a pleasure that he wouldn't fire Mueller. Mueller, there was some... I didn't hear that part, I'm sorry. How do you feel, uh, going back to Iraq, and isn't it fun, is this true? Well, hold on, I got something to say about the Leslie sure, Stahl-Trump sure, sure, sure. interaction. So, Leslie Stahl was contentious in a way that I don't think, uh, I've never, I haven't seen that with other presidents. I think that, and Trump went with it, and I kind of think, to a certain extent, it's because Trump is a reality show guy. Trump is a guy who went on Howard Stern dozens of times and was you know, had a you know pretty raucous uh, interactions with with Howard Stern and you know getting quizzed on his, his sex life and you know talking about you know his his daughter being hot and I mean Trump is used to kind of this you know, a certain lack of decorum in his communication. So I think that invites a, 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 a more contentious to, to form of interviewing. Did you have another point you wanted to make? Uh, uh, it's just, I have a, uh, just my own observation. I want your thoughts on it, Lance, uh, while Rick is do, doing that. Um, have you noticed that, that the Trump administration doesn't really talk much about what's going on with ISIS? Do you think that's by design? That they don't really telegraph or, or, or... I, I mean, look, obviously, they are fighting to win. They know how to keep a secret. Oh, one of the great, one of the crazy things Obama would do is he would announce the number of troops and when he was putting them in and even when he was pulling them out. He was not trying to win the war. Now, uh, Rick will say he fucked up, he was stupid, I'm saying he was a traitor and stupid, <clears throat> but either way, he was not uh, a wartime leader uh, of this country, whereas Trump has defeated ISIS. ISIS is now reduced to the role, ISIS is now on the level of a terrorist organization, whereas before they had their own country. They had a caliphate uh, the size of France, so uh, uh, larger. So the point is, is that Trump is a winner. He won a war. Democrats are pretending it didn't happen. Uh, Rick is hoping no one will notice, so that they they the Democrats can take back the House and lose more wars, just like they lost the Vietnam War. So if you're for, if you like America being defeated, vote Democrat. All right, so here's an article 
It says that the crime rate in New York City has been dropping for 27 straight years. Um, in 1990, more than 2,200 people were murdered in the city. Last year, which is 2017, it was fewer than 300. I'm looking up to see how many of those 27 years Giuliani was mayor. Um, from 1994 to 2001. So seven years out of 27, you had Giuliani being mayor. See, this is why you don't hire a mathematician to lead a government, to do anything involving politics. He fails to comprehend that the reason the crime rate's been going down is because of policies instituted by Giuliani. Giuliani turned around the crime rate in New York. I, I, anybody looking at this video right now, read up on how Giuliani turned around the crime rate in New York City and made it a safe city and if it has continued to be safe, it's because the policies hopefully have been continued. So, so Rick reads a statistic and doesn't understand the, the, the substance that's behind it. So it's not all statistics, guys. So the crime rate dropped for four years before Giuliani became mayor, and then for another 16, 17 years after Giuliani was mayor. Okay, guys, it, Rick doesn't understand the statistics, okay? And it, it, it's true that uh, one of the results of the baby boomers growing up is that they left their teenage years, they left their, the years when young men are most likely to commit crime. So as a result, crime began to go down a little bit. But it is the policies of Giuliani that saved New York from a, a massive crime rate. New York was, was a place people didn't want to go to. So if you want to believe Rick, because he has this graph he's reading from, that's fine. But if you really want to understand why the crime rate went down in New York, read anything about the policies of Mayor Giuliani. Can we please stop this now? and go on and let me go back to my life? Can we right, sing Bull there? Um, hold on one second. Anyway, so we can argue more about this next week. Yeah, Rick is going to try to prove to you that Giuliani didn't bring the crime rate down in no, New York. No, he did, but so did other you, people. You people living in New York, you think you know the truth, okay? So, so next week, let's hear Rick talk his way out of this one. Well, see, i got to look into it. Like, I mean, yeah, the, the city... I lived in New York from 87 through half of 89, and it's a nicer city now. And how much of it was Giuliani and how much of it was other mayors and other th factors? I'll, I'll research it. And, I mean, he certainly wasn't a negligible factor. Was he the main factor? I don't know. And we'll well, I do know. He's the one that turned the crime around in New York. Well, anyway, single there, I guess. Este amor apasionado anda todo alborotado por volver voy camino a la locura aunque todo me tortura se perder nos dejamos hace tiempo pero me llegó el momento Por volver, tú tenías mucha razón, le hago caso al corazón y me muero por volver y volver, volver, volver a tus brazos otra vez. Llegar ir hasta donde estés Yo sé perder, yo sé perder Quiero volver, volver, volver 
Good job.